Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of An Atheist Asks. I'm Christy, and in today's episode I want to go over the second part of what is deconversion research. In the part one video, I went over sort of the research design of my deconversion research, the question and how I went about it. But in today's video, what I'd like to do is to give an overview of where I'd like, um, how I see the research that I'm doing actually connecting with people's lives. So that might be questioning theists, it might just be people on YouTube who are interested in, in atheism and de deconversion. I have some things that um, I, w I think that are relevant for the YouTube community and um, the atheist community in terms of content creation, and not just on YouTube, but also people who do podcasts or do blogs or other information like that. And I think in, in the long term, I hope this research will also help people whose family members have had someone who's, who have come out as atheist, and they can use uh, our, this research to help them understand the process that their loved one has gone through. So as you can see, my surroundings are a little different. Uh, greetings from Dundee in Scotland, where I have been working with my colleague doing research using focus groups, and we've been talking to people here in Dundee about the Scottish referendum and the knock-on, like what's happened since. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's really tiring though. We did five groups over the weekend, and uh, so I'm, I'm maybe a little bit drained, but uh, I wrote the notes for this um, video sort of uh, in the breaks yesterday and then this morning over some cups of tea because I'm taking, taking the morning off having worked all, all weekend and I just got so excited about the content that I didn't want to wait I wanted to record it right away so even though I'm a little bit tired I'm highly enthusiastic so I just thought let's get, let's get going and so yeah let's get going the research that I'm doing I see it actually falling into two phases and in this video I will attempt also to put up a PowerPoint slide that I'm working from so you guys can pause the video and have a look at my notes before I continue. So how about I do that right now? Okay, so as you can see, there's two parts of it. There's the deconversion research, which is the phase I'm in now, and that is where I try to systematically identify the process of deconversion. And I've done the data collection. I will do the pilot study and then work up to a much bigger study. That, all of the findings of that should then lead into what I'm calling the deconversion resource. And that's a website that I'd like to create uh, in the autumn, maybe the winter of 2015. My my research time is pretty well taken up between now and through the summer of next year already. So the earliest opportunity I could reasonably get going on this and actually follow through with a commitment would be either in the autumn or in the winter of 2015. And the aim for that website is to have content or collect content that already exists that addresses the intellectual needs of questioning theists. So all of those points in the intellectual renaissance that I pointed out in my um, 200 sub bonus video on deconversion would thematize the content, uh, or the website, and the kind of content that would be put on it. I would also want to produce content that would be aimed at uh, learning and entertainment, and that would be just doing more on the deconversion process, getting people familiar with the idea that people don't just get angry at God and become atheists, that it's, it's a very deep and sometimes a very long and, and often you know, a deeply thoughtful, reflective, an agonizing process. A third aim for this website is to just provide uh, support and to promote atheist content creators, whether that's on YouTube, podcasts, blogs, or anything else. Again, thematized around the things that questioning theists need to answer questions and to help um, them find their way on their path. And then again, as I said, uh, that long-term goal for to be a resource for friends and family that they could go to the deconversion resource and there might be a video like what do you do if your child has come out as an atheist? And then discussions of, from people who have had that experience and how they dealt with it. And also um, for you know, le learning what is the deconversion process? What has your son or daughter or brother or sister or mom or dad uh, gone through um, by the time they've told you they're an atheist? What are their, some of their experiences? Um, and that way it's, the onus wouldn't fall just upon the person who's coming out as an atheist to defend themselves and justify their decision. They could point to that as saying, here's something you could watch, here's a video I found, and it, would, it really helps explain what I've been through. And I'm hoping that that will also ease the transition as we normalize atheism from sort of the really negative attitudes people have about atheists right now into more accepting, uh, more normalized idea of, of atheists uh, in communities just being ordinary, happy people. I think I've mentioned before that it's important to me to be able to say something 
specific and precise about a narrow topic. And that, again, guides my focus, the research question. And so in the first phase of the deconversion research, I'm interested in primarily looking at Christianity. And then in once that is sort of done and established, or at least well underway, then a whole new project would start with Islam or, um, and Judaism or New Age spirituality or anything else. Before we go any farther, why don't I show you the slide for this talk, a bit of the talk. Okay, so you already see I read to the first point. So going on now to the second one. I mentioned before that the Deconversion Resource website, my vision of it, would be thematized again by the intellectual renaissance. And that means that in terms of the content that I would be putting up, it would be primarily educational in nature. So there are a lot of great um, videos out there that are dealing with current events or news items and things like that. Um, that's not entirely the, the focus of the deconversion resource, um, although once somebody found a, a, a YouTuber who was doing something, they might then go on their channel and see more of their content. But just to keep the focus on deconversion and the common problems that questioning theists have with their religions and their faith, then um, it's a way to narrow the content to make sure it's most relevant to people and what they need intellectually, emotionally, or morally. One of the um, first ideas I have for the deconversion resource website would be to start putting up things like um, the various atheists on YouTube who are doing uh, book re reviews, reading through books and doing critiques of them. So there's um, Steve Shives, I know he mentioned on, on his channel that his review of uh, a, The Case for Christ is one that more than not people have said, uh, I, I found this really helpful, a, a family member gave me this book and I didn't know how to answer it. Your videos really helped articulate the problems I was having but I didn't know how to express. And so there's um, his series, Harry Ray has got one um, out now that I'm following that I really like. I've got one done by Karen Armstrong. And if there are other videos out there, if we can get a lot of this sort of um, engagement with Christian content and giving um, our refutations or our rebuttals or our um, counter worldviews to that, I think that's, an, that's a natural place for the deconversion research to start. And then I would, you know, also collect stuff on creationism, um, logic, uh, apologetics. If you look at on my channel, there are people I support on Patreon. It's kind of the, those people and their content. Um, I mean, I have wider content than just sort of educational videos, but those are the kinds of um, supporter or people who are creating content that I think would be really, really suitable for this website. And ultimately, the idea is to build up a website where there's not only existing content, but I'll speak about this a little bit later, original content that is specifically directed at people who are going through um, crises, directed at questioning theists, uh, with connecting stories of people who've gone in that faith, maybe the same sex, maybe the same ethnicity, maybe the same age range, who have gone through that process. So that somebody could, anybody could go on, um, on, the, on the website and see, you know, deconversion stories and find someone that they could connect with. And having collected those videos, um, the, the longer term goal would be to collect quite a lot of stories of people and then create a book that would be sort of a, a manual for deconversion. That sounds like a good idea because I don't know, I know that there's some out there now, but this would be more based on people's stories um, and I'll explain a bit about uh, more about that when it's appropriate because otherwise uh, I'll mix, mess up my lecture notes. So here's the slide for this uh, talk. Coming from a qualitative perspective, um, I mean, I was trained in, in quants and I know how to do survey analysis and conduct surveys and analyze survey data. But I think when it comes to deconversion from religion, stories are, are really important because if you are alone or feel like you're alone, then it really helps to find someone that you can connect with who has gone, some, who's gone through something similar that you recognize. And then that really eliminates that feeling of being other and weird and somehow maybe broken or defective. And the reason why I want lots and lots of stories by denomination, by sex, by ethnicity, by region, by age, is because faith communities have their own discourses. So I, for instance, was raised as a Catholic, and the idea of speaking in tongues or all this sort of stuff, when I see videos, it just looks so bizarre to me. So <laughs> if somebody was telling me a story about their deconversion experience, and, and a lot of it was focused on those kinds of practices where you get speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit coming into the room, I really just couldn't relate 
to that at all because that has nothing to do with with what I experienced and my deconversion. But I have heard stories of women who were Catholic who also had the same sorts of problems either either with divorce and the consequences of divorce especially on women in, in, in attitudes within the Catholic communities or problems with um, other aspects of, of Catholicism those people I get and the more diversity we have in the stories in the people telling the stories and the experiences of those then the more likely we are to have an opportunity to connect with different kinds of people so that's why I'm, I'm focusing on these deconversion stories to both humanize the face of it so that people see you know that it's the, the normalizing atheism part of it coming out as an atheist and being comfortable as an atheist and to make sure that, that those stories um, can be recognized by a lot of people. So here's a slide for this one. I've touched on it a little bit uh, in the last bit of talking that I did. There are a lot of existing deconversion stories that have the kind of intersectionality that I was describing before. So, um, you know, both men and women's stories. And we know that women tend to be uh, classified as spiritual or religious at a much higher rate than men do. So getting women who are atheists and getting their stories out there for questioning theists, I think is, you know, quite important. We need a wide um, diversity in terms of ethnicity. And again, this time I'm, I'm focusing on English, but eventually my goal would be to have these kinds of videos in all kinds of languages um, about all different types of denominations across the world. There's an importance in having a, a wide range of ages uh, because people will recognize if they're a teenager and have talk about high school and high school concerns and going to college and classes and other concerns that will help people that age range connect to the person's stories much more easily than I could do. So again it's just um, it's it's easier, I think, to make those connections when you can find people either that are like you or people you can connect to. And maybe it's a different denomination, maybe they're from a different ethnic background, but the more variety we have, I think we're just better off in terms of the kinds of people that we can reach. And I also think it's important to have representation in terms of sexual orientation. There are quite a lot of stories that I've collected of, um, particularly, I, mean, I think there are more gay men than gay women uh, in my data set. But the story, there's one person in particular whose story sticks out in my mind because it, it kind of broke my heart. He, he discussed, he's a younger man, probably like in his early 20s, and it was, a, I think, on a, 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 a coming out as an atheist uh, story. I'm not going to give more information because at the time of the video he was still closeted, which is part of the, why the story is so poignant. Basically, he told his um, mom that he was gay, um, and he, when she, he, she found out he was gay, she told him, it's okay because God made you that way. So it's not like, you know, it's not your fault for being gay and I still love you and it's not a problem. When she said that, he then felt really uncomfortable trying to explain that he was also an atheist. <laughs> because the one thing that really helped his mom accept him coming out of the closet as a gay man was her belief that God had made him that way. And so he didn't have the heart to then tell her he was an atheist. So he'd come out to his mother that he was gay, but he was still closeted to her that he was an atheist. That's why I think it's really important to get these dimensions of intersectionality in the stories. Because that just, um, even though that's not my experience, I can understand where a lot of people might find themselves in those situations. And I can tell that story, but I can't have the kind of impact that the person who lived that story can have. And that's why I think a wide diversity is, is really the way to go, in, and that's why it's, it's an important value of mine in this research agenda. Next slide. So going back a little bit to the last video, I have done that initial review of the data when I was collecting it all and watching all of the videos that, are, that now form my data set. And from that, I had identified natural skeptics versus natural believers as a, as a really important initial category of where people start in terms of how they end up as atheists. And then in addition to sort of the types of people that I've initially found, there might be more, but that was the initial sort of two categories that I saw in the data. Then there were the elements of a deconversion, which I identified in the previous video, the naive faith, that doubt and questioning, the retrenchment, the um, intellectual renaissance, paradigm shifts and how important they are, the concept of world collapse where the person can no longer comfortably 
accept things based upon faith. And then the process I haven't spoken too much about, but that whole element of once you take away the God and the religion worldview, then you have to formulate your new sort of secular natural worldview and that process for new atheists and how that goes. So having done that, next slide. I would like to further refine and develop this theory of deconversion. I want to use the pilot study I'll be doing hopefully between now and the end of the year, early January, to further develop the preliminary concepts and theoretical constructs that I have identified. I want to um, then uh, take some time doing that analysis, writing it up and preparing it, and present a video in the spring of 2015 on the pilot study and my results. And then I also want to look at the topics more, identify very clearly the topics upon which deconversion turns. And I've de identified a few of those already, such as um, creationism being refuted by the theory of evolution and all the overwhelming evidence for it, biblical inerrancy uh, and that can, how that can be refuted by textual criticism, the Odyssey, uh, the problem of evil, which often comes up in deconversion stories as a, a problem people have maintaining their faith, apologists and having their arguments refuted, these kinds of th these things. And I also want to map what exists in terms of atheist content, in particular on YouTube, because that's where I'm working mostly, but also with podcasts and, and blogs and other things, and map content that is currently available onto those topics. That would be the preliminary stage of preparing for the deconversion resource website. Next slide. Once the preliminary study, the pilot study, is done, to continue on with the research will become more demanding in terms of time and resources. That's because instead of, you know, if I'm going to do it systematically over a large number of, of cases, I will have to have a lot of transcription work done. I'm working sometimes with videos that have a preliminary transcript that's done just by the computer, and it's meh. Sometimes it depends on the, the how fast the person is speaking, the quality of the audio, these kind of accents, um, how much they distinguish individual words, these kinds of things. But to do a proper analysis of, you know, say 50, 75, or 80 people, then I'm looking at transcribing hundreds, literally hundreds, hundreds of pages of, of people's stories, and I simply can't do that in my spare time. So I will need both the time and the resources to do that systematically. I would also be able to like to be able to um, do this in a way that would allow me to access journal articles and do it on a professional level. So I am very fortunate that in my work I can set my own research agenda. Currently I am taking the weekend off. I'm in Scotland doing field research on um, British politics because that's a, I'm an American living in Germany who is obsessed with British politics. Kind of weird, but that's how it goes. Uh, and the next, uh, after the 2015 election, the next thing on my research agenda is this, is to do uh, more sociological rather than political investigations, maybe social psychology. Kind of haven't quite pegged where this, this is going to fit yet. But my aim now for the larger research project is to um, use, uh, raise money in order to buy out, maybe let's say I, right now around 30% of my total work time, it can be devoted to research. And I wanna buy out maybe 10% of that 30% or 15% of that 30% over a two year period. With the idea being that I would then be able to um, do use Envivo at work and do the hard coding and prepare all of this material for peer review in, and publish it in journals. And so my idea would be, in order to fund this research in sometime in late 2015, would be to start a Patreon account that would be dedicated to raising money. Maybe I'll have to do it a bit earlier, maybe in the spring. I'll need to think about that a little bit. But um, start a Patreon account that would be dedicated to buying out my time so that I could do this professionally, do this at my job. And then I would also spend some time writing grant applications to various secular humanist and atheist organizations, asking them if they could donate $1,000 to buy out my time in exchange for the research and maybe a report on atheism, you know, at a conference, something like this. And this will allow me to do two things. One is to bring my professional academic knowledge to a topic 
that is under-researched and has a, a massive opening for development, investigation, and um, yeah, just be and filling a gap in our knowledge of how people go from faith into atheism. And, you know, do all the things that they want me to do at work, get the peer-reviewed journals in, bring in a little bit of money uh, to fund my time because that's a part of the game now. And then my activist work would still be done in my personal time. So on my channel, I would be informed by the things that I would be doing professionally and using that um, uh, in my personal time and on my personal YouTube account in an activist way. Uh, so on, you know, weekends and things like that. So that is my my long-term goal for this research. And initially, I will, I think when I have um, more time, I will develop probably like a two, maybe a three-year research funding proposal. And I'll do a video on that explaining um, how much things cost and how much I need to raise and why things cost the way they do and when the money needs to, you know, would need to be um, put in these kinds of things. So that is um, my goal in terms of um, making sure that you guys, that this is really high quality stuff, very, you know, rigorous, uh, very precise, very reliable, evidence-based, data-based, and says very specific things about narrow categories so that we can be quite confident that the things that I, we're observing in the data are reflected in what people are actually going through in the world. And the best way for me to do that is to not just do it at night when I get home from work or on the weekends when um, you know I'm, I'm battling being tired, but actually to have you know four hours on a Friday where I can sit and just go through the transcripts and do the coding and do that as my job. That would be, for me, really amazing, and I would be doing it so that it would be going out to the atheist community for you guys to use putting it out there for the peer review community to raise awareness of this of atheism and the deconversion process on a professional academic level. So I think it sounds fun and cool. <laughs> I hope you guys do too. Next slide. So again, with big blue sky thinking, um, the, the main waves of this, we've kind of discussed the first two and I want to discuss the last one now. So first is the deconversion research that will feed into the deconversion resource website. And that will build on existing content informed by the research that I've done in order to really target questioning theists and people who find this stuff interesting, atheist activists who want to learn more about deconversion, YouTube creators who think that their content should be, you know, put up, um, is relevant to one of the topics and want to add it as a, as a video resource for people to use. Uh, part two of that of this long-term blue sky thinking would be to start pr producing professional videos where we get people's deconversion stories and we start organizing it by, you know, Baptists, Catholics, Methodists, um, Church of England, these kinds of denominations where we have stories from people in all of these different denominations, different sexes, different ages, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different incomes, different sexual orientations, as much diversity as we can get, ideally, would be phenomenal and put those up there so that somebody who, like say for me as a Catholic, would be able to go on and hear deconversion stories all from Catholics. Now maybe um, I, I'll decide that's kind of boring and I'll you know check out other people's videos, but at least it gives people a, a starting point. Or we could have women's deconversion stories, or men's deconversion stories, or you know teens deconversion stories. I don't, you know, 19, 18, no, no one under the age of 18 for, you know, sort of like legal ethical reasons um, and that's also why I don't share my deconversion data. It's it's on my channel but it's hidden because um, some of the people on their videos they might be under the age of 18 some of them are still closeted so even though they're available on YouTube if you wanted to go look for them I hide them because for ethical reasons I don't think that's right. It's kind of a tangent but um, let me get back here. An example of the kind of thing that I would like to do it's already been done by the Mormons. There are video, a whole video uh, playlist of several dozen, I think, videos of people who were formerly Mormons talking about their experiences as being Mormon and leaving the Mormon church. I'll put a link in the D box below. You can see uh, that, that playlist. And that would be very much what I would like to do for the deconversion website, is to have something like that, but by, by denomination or other demographics. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite open to that. Then phase three of this would be to write books or pamphlets that would explain the deconversion process like in general and then 
have individual stories of people who've gone through deconversion and within that you know kind of denoting where they were in what phase you know just maybe in the margins or something and so people can see reading you know seven eight ten stories again maybe from you know Catholics who went through deconversion that process so that would be the long-term goal would be a book series ultimately that would come out of this research that's my blue sky thinking ideally the research could would go from maybe 2015 to 2018 with the books coming out right near the end and then the books would in part be royalties for me <laughs> because it would be all my time and effort putting some of that together but a lot of it too I mean I'm quite dedicated to um, supporting atheism and and donating part of the proceeds of any book sales back to uh, secular causes that encourage people to deconvert, deconvert. because um, that's that's the whole point of this is to help people who rely on faith in get um, more exposure to critical thinking to facts and to present them with an alternative and positive worldview that is based in truth and you know and enjoying this life and I thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the video um, thanks for listening and please uh, feel free to write comments um, thoughts in you know in the description or in the comments uh, section below I'm uh, really interested in, in how you guys are reacting to this and what if you have ideas about other things I could do or suggestions for possible um, other content creators that I should look into. So uh, I have been Christy and from Dundee, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. This has been an Atheist Asks and I will do another one of an Atheist Asks in January of 2015. So see you in the new year and then otherwise I'll check you guys out on a different Atheist Reads. And I'm toying with the idea of doing something around the new year, um, the 12 Days of Christy. Uh, little short videos, not these sort of 20 minute ones that take a lot of time to prepare and a lot of time to edit and a lot of time to produce. Maybe little shorter ones, uh, just 12 little videos. I haven't decided yet on what they would be like, but I just like the idea of playing on the 12, 12 days of Christmas with the, the 12 days of Christy. So uh, I'll come up with uh, what I think it might be entertaining videos and I'll check you guys out then. Bye.